This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. We look now at how students, professors and others advocating for Palestinian rights across the United States are facing racist attacks and other threats to their free speech, safety and livelihoods. This week, Florida ordered state universities to ban the group Students for Justice in Palestine, accusing it of supporting a terrorist organization. The group Palestine Legal is documenting and supporting people who were fired or faced other retaliation for sharing social media posts or signing statements in support of human rights for Palestine. This includes our next guest, Rena Workman, who was removed from their position as president of the NYU Law School's Student Bar Association, and saw their job offer at the corporate law firm Winston & Strawn withdrawn after they sent a newsletter to classmates expressing, quote, unwavering and absolute solidarity with Palestinians and their resistance against oppression toward liberation and self-determination, unquote, after Hamas's October 7th attack on Israel. Um, and the subsequent number of Palestinians who died in these last weeks. On Thursday, the Senate unanimously passed a resolution, quote, condemning Hamas and anti-Semitic student activities on college campuses, unquote, which referenced Rena, though not by name. This comes as doxing trucks target people at Ivy League universities who sign Palestinian solidarity statements, now appeared at Harvard, at Columbia, University of Pennsylvania, with digital billboard screens displaying people's faces, their names, and above them saying, anti-Semites. Palestine Legal and over 600 other legal groups and leaders issued a letter calling unelected officials and institutional leaders to address the, quote, hundreds of incidents happening across the country that signal a much broader effort to criminalize dissent, justify censorship and incite anti-Palestinian, anti-Arab and anti-Muslim harassment, unquote. The letter notes this is not a new phenomenon, but it's escalating at terrifying speed, unquote. For more, we're joined in Chicago by Dima Khalidi, the founder and director of Palestine Legal, and by Rena Workman, the NYU law student who had their prestigious job offer rescinded. Um, we welcome you both to Democracy Now! Rena, why don't we start with you? What exactly happened? Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think that, you know, I sent a message to my fellow law students supporting Palestine and offering context to a narrative that I already saw building that was excluding, you know, the 75 years of history that we've seen in Palestine, the apartheid, the military occupation. And I wanted to, you know, add that I support Palestinians in their movement for liberation. And that is what my message was intended to get across. And what happened? You know, after that, we saw this incredibly swift backlash. Um, I lost my job offer. You know, my school immediately put out statements that distanced themselves from me, offered me no specific protections um, publicly. And, you know, I've been receiving hateful and racist and transphobic and queerphobic messages um, for the past three weeks that have only gotten more vile and more hateful as time has gone on. And what about your position both at NYU and uh, your offer of a prestigious law firm employment? Yeah, I think that, you know, the consequences that I'm personally facing are, you know, devastating for me. But I'm also really concerned that it's just promoting this chilling effect that we're seeing across not only my law school, but across universities and other law schools across the country, because folks are now afraid to speak up in fear that they might, you know, become the next me, that they might lose their offer simply for supporting Palestine and fighting this oppression and trying to end this genocide. So what do you say to the law firm now? And have they reconsidered? The law firm has not reached out to me at all. And right now, I really just want to focus on, you know, calling for a ceasefire and ending this genocide. And I really just want to say to everyone who cares about human life and cares about, you know, stopping uh, this killing to, in, to call for a ceasefire and, you know, and end this genocide that's happening right now to the Palestinians. I want to bring uh, Dima Halliday into this conversation. How common is what happened to Rena Workman? It's uh, 
become very common. Uh, Palestine Legal has been documenting for years what we call a Palestine exception to free speech. So it certainly didn't start on October 7th. We've seen these same kinds of tactics, severe doxing, attempts to get people fired and investigated, to punish uh, boycotts for Palestinian rights and other advocacy through legislation and and uh, a, a, an attempt to purge academia of voices that support Palestinian rights. But since October 7th, when we've seen people mobilizing for Palestinian rights, we've seen an exponential increase. We, uh, we've had more than 300 requests for legal help, more than we get in a whole year, typically. And uh, Rina is, is really not alone. And we're seeing dozens, dozens of people getting fired and facing employment consequences around the country for making simple statements in support of Palestinian rights. We're seeing students get disciplined. As you mentioned, Amy, um, there are there is a widespread attack on the student movement for Palestinian rights, which has uh, built uh, uh, an incredible cross movement uh, um, uh, has built cross movement alliances on campuses for the last decade, and uh, really people's livelihoods are being threatened, and people's lives are also under attack. We saw a six-year-old Palestinian boy murdered just for being Palestinian. So this is a widespread effort to intimidate, as Rina said, intimidate people into silence. But Rina is also not alone in the sense that there are so many voices who are speaking out because people are seeing more and more clearly what is happening here. This is about 75 plus years of a settler colonial state that has dispossessed an entire people of their land and of their dignity and of their humanity. And what is happening now is a complete dehumanization of Palestinians that is coming from the mouths of Israeli officials, which, by the way, have been speaking in genocidal terms about Palestinians for 75 plus years. And it's being echoed by our own elected officials repeating to level Gaza and to uh, wipe, uh, wipe Palestinians off of the map. This is a genocide that is unfolding with U.S. support, and more people are seeing that. And, and that's what's critical here. We have to speak up. We have to protect people who are under attack for speaking out, uh, because that is our responsibility as U.S. citizens whose taxpayer money is being used to fuel this incredible uh, attack on, on Palestinians. Can you talk about what's happening in Florida? Uh, Governor DeSantis uh, demanding of the state university system to disband uh, the organization, um, uh, the Palestinian student organization, Students for Justice in Palestine? Of course, uh, DeSantis is often uh, the front runner when we're talking about uh, 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 undermining our constitutional rights. And once again, uh, he has attacked a student group uh, uh, based on their fundamental First Amendment rights to engage in advocacy on this issue. His move uh, is fundamentally contrary to the First Amendment, and uh, it will be challenged, there is no doubt. Um, this is also an attempt to criminalize what uh, students and others are, are, are speaking out about. Um, and there is no basis for this. And frankly, it's part of DeSantis's broader agenda and the right wing's broader agenda to undermine fundamental First Amendment rights by criminalizing protests for racial justice, by criminalizing protests for environmental rights and indigenous rights, and uh, by purging academia um, of people and cur curricula that are trying to teach about the sordid history of racism in this country. Uh, so it is part of his effort to whitewash uh, uh, our, our uh, universities and academia from dissenting voices. And uh, this has to be challenged in order for us to maintain the fundamental constitutional rights upon which this country is based and, and that are essential for any, uh, any uh, uh, prospect of maintaining democracy in this country. 
I mean, it's been interesting what's happened. You've got the doxing of students, for example, at Harvard and at, um, at Columbia. At Harvard, the more traditional conservative organization, Harvard Hillel, actually also condemned the doxing of students and these billboards that are going around with protesters' faces with the word anti-Semite above it. And at Columbia, is it true that um, the um, pro-Israel and the Palestine groups together condemned the doxing? The doxing is one of the most uh, 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 heinous ways of attacking people. Um, these are students, these are individuals who are, you know, working in various arenas, and, and they are being severely harassed. Their information is being publicized. They are uh, they are being uh, uh, barraged as Rena has with death threats and horrible misogynistic, transphobic, and racist messages, uh, and and their livelihoods are being threatened. So we have seen uh, uh, pro, even pro Israel groups uh, uh, condemn this because they see how uh, how horrible it is. For their own peers mm -hmm. to be faced with this uh, with this kind of harassment, and, and universities are really failing to protect their students here. Uh, we've seen a couple of instances where universities are beginning to take measures to to prevent this doxing. And seeing finally, how severe it is. Rena Workman, uh, your final comment. Also, who ousted you as president of NYU's law school bar association? So. The SBA, the Student Bar Association, originally initiated proceedings against me, but since have all resigned. But currently, due to messaging from Dean McKenzie, I am suspended until further notice from all of my presidential duties. And so even though I cannot, you know, say anything or do anything as SBA president, I still want to say as a person that we should all be calling for a ceasefire and an end to this genocide. Rena Workman, I want to thank you for being with us, NYU law student who had a job offer rescinded after speaking out in support of Palestinian rights and calling for a ceasefire, and Dima Khalidi, founder of Palestine Legal. I'm Amy Goodman. Thank you for joining us.